Today, I would like to present our work, which is an interdisciplinary attempt to analyze the practice of humanoid robotics in relation to the concept of time and repetition. In this work, we will refer to the humanoid robot called iCub, made by IIT, Istituto Italiano di Tecnologia. I am the person you can see here, a sociologist who has conducted a participant observation in several robotic laboratories with at least one iCub. Here, I'm teleoperating the iCub. The other person that comes into view here is a roboticist, who is a co-author of this paper. The other co-authors work on the iCub as well. Let's call all of them roboticists. We have observed the iCub from different perspectives. I, myself, intend to research how the iCub has been scientifically used and technologically built up. They have conducted research with or developed technological parts for the iCub. In this real-time experiment, we intended to replicate, or shall we say, repeat, human motions into the iCub via the data recorded from the motion capture suit that was worn by me, which is turned into data for the iCub robotic motion. My methodology is mostly qualitative. I observed ethnographically and participated intently in their activities. They, in turn, observed me and the iCub in a real-time experiment in order to evaluate how precise and robust the robotic practice was. The experiments were conducted in 2018 at INRIA in France. Therefore, the question about time and repetition emerged from this context. But what is time and repetition? The concept of repetition comes from several sources, among them the French philosopher Gilles Deleuze. In short, repetition happens in two ways. Let's call them natural repetition and differential repetition. For instance, if we take humanoid robots as electromechanical repetitions of the same physical phenomena every time they work, we have natural repetitions. In turn, if we apply it to humans, the concept of natural repetitions does not work so well, because humans repeat differently every time, which is known as differential repetitions. In other words, Humanoid robots move because they repeat the same technical conditions and humans repeat differently because our social, historical, political and subjective conditions are always different. We would like to sustain that, in general, both the repetitions are interconnected. Let's imagine that each square is a system. From an interdisciplinary systems theory perspective, we could formulate that humans are in social systems, which means humans come from the evolution in biological systems. Yet, biological beings, such as humans, also come from physical and chemical systems. There are various systems, and these systems have their inner time, at least the social ones. Mitsushiro Tada claims that a system is not in time, nor is it a system that at first exists and then has time, but rather, a system is time. Let's assume, however, that every system has its own inner time, or at least its own inner repetition. Additionally, systems come from other systems which repeat some of their inner elements, even though each new system is considered to be new because it is different from the previous one. Let's suppose that technology, from the point of view of an interdisciplinary systems theory, deals with the environment, that is, with repetitive elements of physical and biological systems. Finally, let's delimit that humanoid robots, by extension the iCub, is a technology that deals with repetitive physical elements. Before we go on, what is technology? Halfman claims, technology is a communicative mode of operation by which a set of information is linked in the medium of causality and isolated from other communications. Additionally, Halfman formulates the concept of technology based on the theory of social systems. In this way, technology is centered around the question whether or not it works for communication. If it works, we have a medium of communication among social and psychic systems. If it does not work, we have an installation, which means that the technology is broken or that it is being developed. In the case of the iCub, we have an installation of a human or robotic technology which in some cases works as a medium of communication in laboratory conditions. From a contextual point of view, a table, electricity, a light bulb, a flat floor, etc. 
are all examples of technology. Having defined what technology is for our work, let's return to our experiment. As we can see, the roboticists have established here some limits so that the iCub will not fall. I'm wearing a motion capture suit which records data from the position of my human body joints and replicates them in the humanoid robotics joints of the iCub. To set up the experiment, the motion capture suit had to be calibrated through a software which computes the human body sensors coupled into the suit. The person who prepares the suit configurations is my colleague here. This way, an avatar-like body appears. The next step is to record my motion data because the sensors give the software the position of my body in time. So, if I move my arms, the sensors will indicate my motions which will be recorded. Then it opens some temporal possibility. Here are some illustrations. 1. The data are just recorded. 2. The recorded data are replicated in the simulator. 3. The recorded data are taken at the same time or in parallel as they are replicated in the simulator. 4. The recorded data are replicated in the iCub. 5. The recorded data are taken at the same time as they are replicated in the iCub. The number 3 and 5 are made in so-called real-time and there is a small delay between capturing data and replicating them in the simulator or humanoid robot. There is a difference between humans and humanoid robot that is exactly what the repetition does with both, a relationship between natural and differential repetitions. Humans rely on muscles to move, but only muscles are not enough. They need a socialization of the body in order to move coherently. That is called by Lacan, for example, the mirror stage, when an eye function will unify the chaotic body motions of the baby, but on, only under the condition that this baby regards the entire body of the other, its mother, who is already a coherent unit, that is, a social situation. In turn, humanoid robots, as the eye cub, do not have muscles, they have motors. Motors are made of actuators which represent degrees of freedom. Actuators transform electrical into mechanical energy resulting in motion. To sum it up, the motors are usually rotary based and have rotors and stators. Electromagnetic forces emerge from the interaction of a rotating magnetic field generated by the fixed stator where there are three electric phases and the permanent magnets curved into the moving rotor. This hardware scheme is controlled by a low-level software controller, which also manages time in order to give the motor periodic electricity in repetitive patterns. The unit of time here is the millisecond. Hence, here, from the point of view of humanoid robotics, time and repetitions appear at a micro-technological level. A high-level software which still demands a micro-technological level of time and repetition can be built up only after the low-level software is stabilized. From this moment on, the code written by the roboticist will control the entire unit to accomplish motions that require the coordination of all humanoid robots' body parts, also called holy body motions. Now, we can better formulate the interdisciplinary question of the natural and the differential repetition linked to time in the ICUB teleoperation. Humans are placed within social systems, biological systems, and physical systems. Technology has been built up since humans created themselves. As human products, technology deals with nature, that is, biological and physical phenomena mostly, which are also underlying repetitions. The humanoid robot, as seen before, is a consequence of natural repetitions too, at a mostly physical level, but only within the framework of the human communication. The fact that the ICA moves, for example, comes from a performative act that assigns the body motion to the humanoid robot. Such a motion is executed by humans as a result of an evolutionary path whereby repetition always happens differently. In humanoid robots, repetition has to be stabilized and controlled. In the teleoperation experiment, natural repetitions and differential repetitions are linked to one another.